Hello. Um, so I'm kind of excited to introduce uh, this pull request because uh, it's a huge deal. Um, Ives, the creator of Cold Sandbox, um, and me, we, we've been talking for a long time because uh, I created the Webpack bin project. And we talked a lot about NPM dependencies and, and so on. And also generally like these kinds of tools of, of Code Sandbox. And we multiple times talked about starting uh, a collaboration. So instead of having two different services, we could rather collaborate on one. Um, for this to happen, uh, it was necessary, um, like to deprecate Webpack bin, it was necessary to um, create a new reference project for a framework called Cerebral. Because Webpack bin was the reference project for the Cerebral framework. So I asked Ives if it was okay to do a refactor of Code Sandbox using the, the Cerebral framework. Because then I could deprecate Webpack bin and, and keep the reference project and we could start our collaboration. And for him it was perfectly okay. It's currently now running on React and Redux. Uh, it will continue to run on React. Uh, though instead of Redux we're going to use Cerebral and the MobX state tree. And this gives uh, an opportunity to, to review all the code, optimize it, uh, improve the user experience and, and all this stuff. Getting more people into the core of co Code Sandbox. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm just going to give like a conceptual overview of how all of this, um, what these changes means for the project. So uh, what we can do first is just refresh Code Sandbox here. And uh, this is now running on Cerebral and MobX state tree. There, there are still some stuff that needs to be done, which is pointed out in the pull request, but it's now running. Uh, and we move a lot faster because the core refactoring has been uh, uh, has been done. So what we can instantly see here is that when we use the Cerebral debugger, we get tons of information about what's happening uh, inside Code Sandbox. Uh, and it's currently using the React router now, but that will also be changed to the Cerebral router because it gives more opportunities to prepare state when uh, URL changes are made. Because now, uh, like you can see here, it triggers logic because the app mounted, but also because the content mounted. But all of this should rather be related to the current URL. Uh, anyways, I won't go into that. But as we can see here, we are uh, grabbing the token, we are listening for connection changes, we are grabbing the user, we can take a look at the user here. We are setting the user and we're also setting the current patron price based on the on the user. And we can see that we got a connection change, so we set the connected to true and blah blah blah. Um, we can also see, yeah, that we set a new sandbox, maybe this is more interesting. And there's tons of stuff happening here. Um, we're grabbing the sandbox and all this stuff. The point is that now you get a visual insight into how Code Sandbox works. And this is a really great tool for understanding uh, the code, but also for debugging purposes. So how does all of this uh, look like in code? Um, so if we look at the project, uh, within packages, app, source, app, which is like the code sandbox itself. Uh, there's a new folder now called new store. The convention in Cerebral is to actually call it app, but since we already have app, uh, app, and then another app, it's kind of silly. And also I just want to point out that we are actually going to delete the previous store folder. Uh, which holds all the reducers, the actions, the selectors, and all this stuff. Um, so yeah, we're kind of like uh, changing out the store. So the way you structure a cerebral application is something we uh, call modules. So if we look into the core module here, uh, we can see the definition here. 
Since we're using Mobix state tree, uh, we are defining a model for our state, which is basically the types. And that means that we're actually defining our types at the, uh, like the global state level instead of inside all the different components. Uh, and then we have the actual initial state there. And then we have something called getters, which is a Mobex state tree thing. And we also have signals, which is basically where the components trigger, uh, trigger stuff. And we have some error handling, we have some submodules, and we have what we call providers. Now, providers are basically just access to side effects. So we have access to calling the API, uh, handle the connection, uh, the token, just normal HTTP. We also have a, a browser provider. All kinds of side effects we want to run, we expose as providers. Um, so let's. Let's have a look at the model first. So this is, as I said, from Mobex state tree. We just use the types as described in the documentation of Mobex state tree. But it's combined with the state, uh, like the modules and state in Cerebral. Um, the getters are like, um, kind of like computed values. So for example, we have a value that we call is patron so that we can like say store is patron like this that is a getter and if we look into it it just states that it points to this points to the state and it says this dot use subscription and subscription dot since that means you're a patron um, yes and then the way we define business logic in Cerebral is using what we call sequences. So for example, if I jump into sequences here, we are declaratively describing the logic. Uh, that means that when you look into the sequences, you can very easily understand what they are doing. You don't have to jump between files uh, and read a lot of instructions for for the computer, you just read the declarative code to give a, a, a sense of what it's doing. And this is what, what is picked up by the debugger and presented there. So we can, for example, see when we're loading the app, we are using an action for, for setting the token, listening to connection changes. If there is a token, we go and grab the user, we set the user and we set the patron price. So each of these individual actions, they are completely decoupled. Meaning that, as we can see here, there's an action called remove notification. It doesn't import anything. Uh, it just uses uh, the context, which is provided from Cerebral. And this context holds access to the state store, and the properties passed into the execution of the, what we call the signal and any of these providers. So access to the API here, and um, uh, HTTP, if I want to do a plain HTTP call, and all this. Uh, and this is where we write the imperative logic inside these actions. But as you might have seen, we also have access to these uh, operators, we call them in Cerebral. And those allows us to, to write declarative logic without implementing any imperative code at all. So for example, when we just wanted to know if we have a token, we can use the when operator. And we check the state if we have the property JWT. Um, yes, uh, I shouldn't go too much into this stuff, but this is how it works. And then we have like submodules. So for example, the patron uh, module has the same thing. It has a model, it has some state, it has a getter, and it has some signals. And this is how you get insight to everything. And if we go back to the debugger, uh, we can see when we go to the state tree that we have uh, the same structure here. So here we have patron with its price, we have editor with a bunch of uh, different state. Uh, so you have like a complete overview of all the state and all the logic that runs for changing that state. Okay, so what does this do to the code itself? Uh, 
uh, talking about like components. Because if we move now over to, for example, pages here, and we can look at Patreon and the pricing model. Uh, and I just want to show you the previous code for the pricing model. Here we can see that it needs to connect to, to Redux because it needs the user using a selector. And then we need a constructor, get price. We have to define uh, what should happen when the component uh, updates with new props. Uh, we have some logic for figuring out what tier, uh, like the patron tier. And then we have the logic for rendering. Um, this is where I personally think, uh, think that code gets messy. It's when we try to isolate all this business logic into individual components. Um, sometimes it's a good thing if it's like a shared component, but it, when it's an application component, this just hides uh, everything that happens. You don't get any insight when the application runs and it gets really messy because this is really about the UI. So what happens when we move our logic and our state into, for example, Cerebral? Uh, we can see that uh, this becomes the code. So what we do is we just inject the store and then we um, need to figure out the badge based on the patron tier. And that's, that's all. It's all about the UI. Um, and all the state is provided and handled somewhere else. And this is the general um, feel of the new code base, is that the components are now very focused on only rendering UI. And then you have this um, cerebral module structure with its model state and signals that defines the state of the application and how to change that state. Cool, uh, but this is like a, a simple example and there are some really complex parts to, uh, to code sandbox. So for example, if we head into components, sandbox, code editor, Monaco, um, and yeah, I also have the previous code here. So with Redux, you have to do a lot of um, checking. Um, because it's uh, immutable, meaning that you have to write a lot of logic in these complex components to figure out one thing is when should it actually re-render, but also when should it run imperative logic. Um, because we need to do that, especially with these code editors, because there's a Monaco instance where we have to call um, methods on based on the change of different state. So this is uh, like should, should component update. And we can see that there's a bunch of different checks. Some of them um, goes in and, and calls methods. And some of them um, are based on when it should render. So um, this gets a little bit messy. Um, and this is just... Um, yeah, I don't want to go into that. I just want to show rather how it works now. So now we can clean this up because when we use MobX Daytree, it automatically knows um, it automatically knows when to render based on what we use inside the component. But we still have to react to different state changes. So I want to sh just show how that works. So what happens now when uh, we configure the editor. If we move down here, there's a ton of stuff happening here. But we are doing um, some different things here. So, for example, whenever there's, um, we're auto running depending on, on some state. So, just to give an example, what we want is whenever the errors array changes, like there's removed errors, added errors, we want to. Um, update the editor. So what we do is that we just call auto run and we give it a method. So if we move down to handle errors here, let's see if we can find it. We see that we grab the errors directly from the store and then we run the logic. And 
uh, Mobex just understands now that, okay, this method is interested in the errors, so whenever they change, it should run this method, and it does. Um, and then there are uh, other cases where we want to look at the changes of, um, of a state. So what we do, for example, here is that we observe the current sandbox, and whenever that value changes, we want to handle it. And it's the same for changing a file or a module, which is called in, in code sandbox. We want to handle that. So um, instead of having this component did update and all this um, comparison logic, we can just write the logic um, more like directly. So um, that was a few examples of, of how the code looks like. One of the important changes now is that we do not depend on immutability anymore. Because uh, immutability is actually surprisingly slow. Um, and the reason is that when you have a rather large data structure and you change something like in the down in the data structure, every, everything changes the way uh, to the top. So if we change the code inside one module, that means that all like the array of modules has changed, the sandbox has changed, the whole app has changed. And it becomes quite difficult to optimize this. And that is why we use a, an approach called um, normalization and denormalization, which basically means that we uh, prevent having nested state structure. But the problem with that is you can't look at your state uh, the way it arrives from the server. But uh, because you have to split it up for a client for optimization reasons. But now we don't have to do that anymore. So if we look into the debugger, we see that inside the editor we have sandboxes and they look exactly as they do when they arrive from the server. And we just manipulate them directly. We don't have to uh, do any normalization and do any special checks or anything. And I think that's a really powerful concept. Um, cool. Um, so yeah, to, to summarize, um, the project now um, is refactored to Cerebral and Mobex state tree. And this gives some benefits, which I hope I've introduced here. And what we're going to do now, we're going to refactor the rest of it. Uh, we need to do bug testing or, or a, a bug tracking um, or bug hunting, I guess. Yeah, bug hunting and fix the bugs. And the goal is to remove the store folder. All of this stuff is going to be removed. All the selectors, reducers, and everything. It's going to be uh, removed. Um, and when that's done, uh, it will be merged into Master of Code Sandbox. And from there, we uh, have more people contributing on the user experience. So basically, the most important user experience improvements are optimistic updates. So for example, now when you create a file, delete a file, move a file, and um, add, the, um, yeah, to take that example first, um, it's delayed. It doesn't feel like it's happening when you do it, but it can. Um, and that's very easy to do with this refactor. And also when you add and remove dependencies, there are some loading indications that doesn't feel quite good. And all that stuff can be, improved a lot and we will do that as soon as the like the first iteration of the refactor is done so um i hope <laughs> you are excited about this um the 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 work that's uh needs to be done is listed in the pull request request and it will be updated as we move along uh, we hope to get, um, get through all the refactoring by the end of this week. And then I hope people will help us test this, uh, basically check that everything still works. And then we will move into master and start working on 
improved user experience. Okay, awesome. Uh, thanks for having a look and uh, have a nice day.